Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. OK, so uh, boy, this is an interesting subject because uh, you know, weight training has been around for 100 years. And uh, there's so much dogma out there. And there's so much uh, stuff about what you know, tradition says is the best way to get big, uh, whether it's lifting heavy, whether it's compound exercises. Um, and, and so what, I, what I'm going to challenge you to do today is just sort of like ask the right questions, questions we should all be asking along the way. When someone says, this is a good exercise, here's what you should be asking. This is why we're here. We're here to learn how to exercise better. And what does better mean? Better means that you can be more productive, you can be more efficient with your time and with your energy, and you can be more uh, risk-free of injury if you make certain changes to your resistance exercise. This is more growth, less wasted effort, and no injuries. It's good. In fact, sometimes we would actually emphasize it. We would actually try to, you know, well, no, that cramping is bad. Cramping means overshortening. Cramping, cramping is, a, is active insufficiency in action, losing strength potential. How do you fix that? You bend the hip. You lengthen the starting position. Now you have, you, you, avoid, you avoid the overshortening of the hamstring. Much, much better. Same thing with biceps, right? Because the bicep crosses the shoulder joint, the farther up your arm is, the more you move the insertion toward the origin, the more that muscle overshortens. If you do a curl from overhead cable, you can feel that bicep contracting, I mean cramping. Now, some of this bilateral deficit is neurological, right? And some of it is mechanical, right? So that means that, you know, like you see these people doing like a, like a deadlift with, with a kettlebell, right? And they go, you know, if I try to do this with two kettlebells, it's more than twice as hard than if I do this. Why is this so easy? Well, you're putting this back leg up, and so you're counterbalancing it. <laughs> That's a mechanical thing, right? Um, but also, if you're doing a curl, you could also shift your body and turn. So there, these are mechanical components. It doesn't really matter whether it's entirely neurological or partly neurological. The fact is, in most cases, it holds true, which is you will do, you will do better if you work one limb at a time. Or this, it's the same thing, to the pecs, right? Because all, what I've done is I've changed the direction of resistance now so it's more behind me than above me. When it's more above me, I bend over more, so it's still relatively perpendicular to my torso. And that's what I explain in the book is that, you know, when we talk about an incline or a decline something, that makes sense when you're talking about gravity. It doesn't make sense when you're talking about cables because all you have to do is change the direction of, of the resistance and you can create a flat chest press with an incline. Can you just do like a, like a, uh, like a shoulder width or slightly shoulder width in stance and yeah. you can kind of look at the difference? The issue with that for myself. You'll have to bend over for it, right? You, sure, you, well that's what it's, and I think it's, I think it's good for. It's good to see that. Yeah, right, now see that. So he's having like a lot and, of problems. And also he's wanting to bring his heels up. And this is kind of starting to lose yeah, tension. Yeah, fascinating. That, that, that's like a low back. Yeah. Like, like, slightly. Yeah, and your torso was very upright with the wider stance. And I'm trying to hold now. I'm squeezing my back, rooting my feet. So same position as the squat. See the dis difference in the That's distance. Right. Trying to keep a vertical form, stacked position. That's not going to be a good position for me. That's going to like start to load my tricep too much. So I can keep it high, vertical, and I'm going to drive. I'm pushing, this, I'm pushing this way with my feet so I can translate the force back to the bar. So when he does this, he lengthens his torso. When he does this, he shortens his torso. So this is a deadlift bar. It's a little, so I can actually pull the tension out of it which will reduce the range of motion a little bit and it allows me to create a little bit more stiffness, a little bit more comfortable. 